Patrick, in trying to understand religion, either the reality of it or the impact on human culture. Uh, the claim is that evolutionary psychology can explain religion. Uh, I think everybody really needs to understand this, whether you're a believer or not. So let's start with evolutionary psychology. How does that work in explaining religion? Well, I think um, the, the best supported evolutionary psychology approach to religion is known as costly signaling theory. And that basically suggests that uh, it, it asks, well, why, why do people engage in these bizarre religious practices? You know, the, cutting the foreskin or not eating certain foods or praying all day long or reading and studying arcane scriptures and so forth. Why all these? They're very costly. So why are people doing this? Costly in terms of time, time and energy, energy. They give money. You know, I yeah. mean, it's all kinds of stuff like that. So why would people do that? It's, uh, and the costly signaling theories suggest that they do it be precisely because it is costly. And it sen sends the signal that you can trust me. Mm. Why, why else would I be engaging in all these bizarre behaviors? I mean, I really mean business. <laughs> I want to be part of your group. I'm not going to defect. I'm going to cooperate. You can trust me. I'm doing this for a long time. I, I, I engage in all these ascetical practices over many months. I'm not just a fly by night. You know, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. Trust me. Let's cooperate. So the costly signals are you can't fake them. If you're not really serious about cooperating, you're not going to do this over the long term. You might refrain from your favorite <laughs> foods for a day or two, but to, to do it for months, for years even? No, you've got to be really committed. So there, these signals are invaluable indicators of commitment. So let's just follow that through in terms of evolution. If, if I'm making that signal to, to my group that I am trustworthy because I'm engaging in these costly activities, I'm donating money to the, mm -hmm. to the religious group, I'm, I'm, I'm doing certain physical things, uh, rituals, etc. Now, how does that increase the, the fitness of, of my genes? you got people cooperating with you now. Okay. So you have a much better chance of getting your genes into the next okay. generation. Furthermore, your reputation is enhanced. So you're going to get better mates. Okay. Good. You know, so for all, all these reasons, it's it's really efficient way of setting up long-term cooperative alliances. So, and that that's especially important also for war. You know, imagine imagine battling some group across the hill there. You want your group to be cohesive, and and no worries about any defectors. You don't want any defectors if you're going to go to battle with the group over the hill. So that so these costly signals are extremely important in, in enhancing. And obviously, signals. if you're going to war, the the ones that win are the ones who will then live to propagate their own genes. That's right. Yeah. And so, therefore, the more genetic predisposition you have for religion, goes the theory, you then will have a higher percentage of that populace remaining alive and, and able to propagate right. their genes. And that's why the genes remain in the population, mm -hmm. because they are, in fact, enhancing fitness. Yeah, and, and getting enhanced in the population, because others are getting and, killed And yeah, their off. frequency are rising in the population. Yeah, right, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, where then, if that's a general theory, are, are there some other theories that, that criticize that, or what, what, are, what, what are other possible theories as well? Because, I, 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 you know, it's not just... Yeah, one, um, another one, I think that, so that one has, the costly signaling has some good evidence in support of it. Another uh, theory that also has some evidence is known as the ritual healing theory. And that is the idea that if you can go into altered states of consciousness associated with religious experiences, you enhance your ability to heal yourself. No, but we know this, you know, placebo helps, yeah. uh, hypnosis helps. Psychosomatic medicine. Yeah, right. So uh, the ones who are able to heal themselves are better able to propagate their oh, genes. That's a very simple one in a yeah. sense. Yeah. And, you know, in meditation, that has a, 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 a palliative effect on some people. It has health people. effects. So, and we know this, this these are measurable effects. So mm. the people who are able to go into altered states, are the ones who can heal better, and they're the religious ones. So the genes for heal, religiosity... Heal through normal bodily process, through, not, not spiritual, not, not right, magical stuff. We would stuff. call placebo, we, right. hypnosis, right. you know, whatever, whatever mind effects 
on the body that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. are happening. So, so religion can enhance that. So that's a very right. simple way to in, to uh, right. increase the percentage in the population of religious oriented genes, right. because that body will be a healthier body. Right. So you live longer to pass your genes to the next generation. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, uh, what kind of criticisms are there of the evolutionary psychology of religion? Um, that it's 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 a young science to start with, so there have not been uh, enough uh, validation studies. You know all the usual criticisms. I mean, it's just it's brand new. You know, so these theories are speculative. They have some supporting evidence, but uh, you know they're, the studies that really test them rigorously have not been done. Is that even possible to test rigorously? Well, you can, you can give people um, economic games, you know, have a high religious group, a low religious group, uh, uh -huh. play these economic games and see who cooperates. You can prime people with religious primes and see to what extent they cooperate after having a religious prime. So there have been these sorts religious of Religious prime meaning that uh, before you do an economic game, you predispose them, you show religious pictures to right, them. Right, you and, see a picture of the Pope if you're yeah, Catholic, or, right, you know, some, right, something along those right, lines. Right, right, right. And those studies have shown, yes, cooperation does increase after you get primed with a supernatural concept or with a picture of a Pope or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what are the implications for the reality of religion? Is there something behind it, something supernatural, some God? If you can, seemingly with great validity, show that religions can be explained in totality by evolutionary psychology uh, mechanisms. Well, uh, I'm not sure religions can be explained in totality. We can explain their functional correlates, okay? And so the fact that something has a functional correlate, you know, language, for example, has all kinds of functional correlates. By looking at Broca's area, do we explain language phenomena in its totality? No. Language is a cultural phenomenon. It's a meaning phenomenon. It's a narrative phenomenon. I mean, it's got all these things. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that principle. But now with religion, you're asking me to believe something of a dramatically different nature than the structure of language. You're asking me to believe that there's really some supernatural existence, some God. And uh, you've just given me some very logical explanations through evolutionary psychology. Right? I don't need any of that. Mm. I can just explain it. So it seems like that's of a different nature. That if you can explain religion, you don't, and it has some of these good effects, uh, no argument about that, mm. so maybe there's a benefit. But maybe it's a benefit based on an illusion, because you, you can't justify a, a, some immaterial existence and make a comparison to language, which we know is real. I certainly agree that uh, the evolutionary psychology data makes it harder for the theists and other religionists to claim there are supernatural beings out there in reality. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is that it's not a slam dunk case. I mean, by, by, by demonstrating functional correlates of something, you can't make veridical, truth-relevant statements about the phenomena in general.